Hello Final Community Metalheads, it's Alex here and today is 13th of August which is a very special date. Today is the birthday of death of one of the most influent metal musicians of, I wouldn't say only extreme metal but I would say metal and heavy music in general. I'm talking about Jon Andreas Nöttweit, uh, sorry for my pronounce. Uh, he is Swedish, he was a Swedish guitar player and singer well known for this band called Dissection, which is, I think it is a band that uh, doesn't need much introduction. All of those who are into metal know how influential they were and how they still are, not only musically speaking, but ideologically as well. There are so many good bands that are coming after dissection. I would like to mention one before I start the video because if I speak a lot, I'll probably forget about it. It is a band from Brazil called Outlaw. They just recently released a new album. Uh, I'm not quite sure if they are still established in Brazil. I have in my social media the, the main singer guitar player and I think he's living in Amsterdam right now. And I know that they're gonna tour in Europe uh, quite soon from now, so if you have the opportunity on checking them out, don't miss that. I'm gonna be linking all, uh, all the bands and all the, the things that I'm gonna be mentioning here. And you know, there's quite a coincidence. I'm gonna talk about this year's uh, most expected most luxurious, most desired, and probably one of the most expensive releases, which is this box here, Dissections, I'm the Great Shadow, the Dissection History. This is a tape release, released by this German label called Darkness Show Rise. Uh, I mean, this is not vinyl, as I mentioned, this is tape, and Darkness Show Rise is doing a good job in keeping the analogic code alive here. This is not their first box, they are releasing a lot of stuff from all variety genres within metal, extreme metal mostly. They have a sub-label that releases pretty much Norwegian black metal. They also release the box in this... Uh, in this uh, mode uh, for Burtzum as well and Immortal as well. Uh, I mean, for Immortal, I know it was not every single album, but it's also worth checking out. And I mean, for those that like Celtic Cross, they also released it and plus many other bands. I'll be linking their website here. You can just go there and check it out. You're not gonna be missing quality and a very dedicated work that they are doing over there. Uh, this is not the only release by Darkness Rise that I have. I can talk about it any other time about other boxes. Next month they are releasing a box by King Diamond with all the work from uh, 84 to I guess 90. I mean right from uh, he started his solo career until 1990 so i guess there are seven tapes plus a lot of extras that i'll be showing here next month because i already did the pre-order those that know me knows that king diamond is my god so let's go to this this is i'm the great shadow box uh, this is gonna be an unboxing plus personal comments video I know it's gonna be quite long, so there's a huge potential for being quite boring as well. And I'm sorry for that, but those that are into dissection, I know that they're gonna be here watching till the very end, because this is one of those kind of bands that every fan is like a deep fanatic about it. And yeah, it's just a band that touches people's hearts and I'm, I'm so glad with that. I, I can't even describe that. Anyways, let's go to it. So when you open the box, here on the back you have Jon's face. 
and here so rest in chaos 75 2006 so today it's exactly 15 years since uh, he committed suicide uh, those who know the history of dissection know that this was not a case of depression or anything like that it's related to to his satanic beliefs and I, i'm gonna talk a bit more about that later so when you open you pick it up by the patch there's a back patch so i'm gonna show the patch first so here's a shaped back patch with their logo their artwork and the name of this release i'm the great shadow uh, if i'm not wrong shadow was uh, the personal nickname of yon uh, i'm not that he ever used that on the band i guess but still you know i think it's a reference to that i might be wrong so there's a massive book as you can see i don't know if you're like me that love the smell of new books especially those that come in this kind of Couché paper, I don't know the, the proper English name for that. In Brazil we call it couché. Yeah, so here we've got some pictures, some lyrics, excerpts. Uh, I'm gonna be showing something. What is that? Oh, that is a uh, press release. Like very old school typing machine. So here influenced by bands like possessed mayhem slayer old death necrovore immolation samael morbid celtic frost dark throne and the likes dissection yeah so dissection is a death slash black metal band they started more in the vein of black metal and they moved in their rebirth phase to something more melodic death metal they were always very melodic you're not gonna find anything raw and very norwegian like in dissections music they were always very technical and i mean the guitar skills from yon and his compositions not only musically but his lyrics are also very quite unique so here you've got a picture by him in Stonehenge he looks quite young in this picture uh, let me check one thing here well I guess it is I guess that they sorted the pictures of this book chronologically so you here you have some flyers of concerts playing for with entombed rabbit carrot is another band from the same city as Dissection, I guess they're from a city called Strumstad, something like that. Sorry, I've never been to Sweden, I don't know the pronounce. Uh, there's a very nice Facebook page, it's called Strumstad's Metal Scene, Past, Present and Future, maybe something like that. Where the guy responsible, he was Jon's uh, personal friend and he's a friend of many other bands of the city. I mean, not only Dissection and R Rabbit's Carrot, but also Nosferatu and other bands that are worth checking out. Here you've got some, and this is a classic black metal look with some spikes, a Bathory t-shirt. And it's crazy that they started this band so young. You know, I think that Yon was not even 14, 15 years old when he started Dissection by the age of 18 he was released releasing a uh, storm of the lights bane which is one of the most incredible albums in my opinion one of my favorite ones oh here you have an excerpt of the lyrics of retribution storm of the lights bane i have come to challenge your ways lights bane the last of your days this is a classic everyone who knows what i'm talking about probably hears that in the way that he would sing and here there are many unpublished pictures taken by fans this is a concert in germany in 95 uh, i'm not gonna be showing every picture here but let me check on the 
So April 2005 here, this is already, where is that? Let me check, Mexico City. Yeah, the time they went to Latin America. So here you have like some Mexican fans. Man, I wish I had sent some of my personal pictures of 2005. Oh yeah, here's June in Budapest. The concert of dissection in Brazil was in September 2005, one year before his death. Uh, man, it's a crazy story about this concert. I'm gonna tell it quite soon. I just wanna check if there are pictures from it. Oh, so here I'm in July. Some pictures of July. Yeah, so no. Unfortunately, there are no pictures from the Brazilian concert here. Uh, the concert in Brazil was on, uh, if I'm not wrong, on the 2nd or the 3rd of September 2005. And it was on a Friday night. And the next night was Morbid Angel playing there. Back with the almost classic lineup with David Vincent, Trey as I thought, and Pete Sandoval playing only the music from their first four albums, so <laughs> you could imagine. And back in the days it was, you know, uh, not very easy to go to both concerts because of the price and stuff like that. And I remember that the Dissection concert was very empty. There were no more than, I would say, 300 people there in the place. It was in this small place called Angar. And... The next day, uh, there was the Morbid Angel concert in in the gymnasium of a stadium of a popular club, a football club back in Brazil. And this one, there was like thousands of people. This one was a huge compared to the dissection one. And yeah, that's the thing. I remember I went there with a friend, my best friend from my hometown, Beto, uh, and <laughs> it was... Uh, a, a very nice uh, thing. I, I had a lot of friends in Sao Paulo. We lived, as I mentioned, in the countryside from a different state. I mean, same countryside is not exactly the proper word, but th there is no English word for not living in a federal state capital. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we lived in a small city. I would call it like just small town. Uh, around 300 kilometers, which is like 200 something miles from Sao Paulo. It's not very far, but still uh, the connections in Brazil are, are very hard. So we went by bus and I had some friends in Sao Paulo, but nobody that could host me and my friend at the same time. Meaning that we slept on the street. <laughs> that night because we went to dissection on Friday and Morbid Angel on Saturday and it was very funny that we found we met Yon on the street on Saturday like doing purchases after the concert and I was like totally mesmerized I was like man is that fucking Yon and we went there and started talking to him and he was very happy very cheerful because he uh, he was released from prison not a long while ago and we were talking to him and mentioning how much we loved the concert and that we came from a different state to watch that and we spent the night that we were gonna watch Morbid Angel and he was, you know, he was quite young by the time, like 30 years old and he was a true metalhead, you know, he had more or less the same background of listening and loving music and there's even this classic picture of him as a child with David Vincent from Morbid Angel. I don't know who took this picture. I don't know where it was published. I'm sorry for not giving the proper credits for it, but it's a, I mean, well-known picture right now. And I remember that at night in the concert, uh, Morbid Angel started playing Immortal Rights. And it was huge. It started a mosh pit that I don't think it was possible to escape from it, you know? So everybody started being that pit and out of a sudden I was like, okay, this is my chance for getting closer to the stage. So I started crossing in the middle of the mosh pit 
and out of a sudden there's these two hands grabbing my shoulders and I look and it's Yon from dissection and he's totally going mad he's like don't don't leave me behind here so he went together to the front of the stage and he was head banging and looking at me like very happy and a week later there was Judas Priest and I met him there on the line so he stood in Brazil for at least uh, a few weeks or something like that a few at least two weeks I guess anyways those are nice memories uh, yeah I'm here I'm gonna talk again about the box there is a smaller patch with the same artwork and also another patch so there are three patches in total this is a flyer with the release I'm sorry for the glare this lamp is not helping much what is that okay this is a certificate of authenticity it's hand numbered my copy is the number 621 out of 1500 oh and here it lists every tape that comes with it this is a 19 tapes release sounds crazy it is crazy so here I've got the first poster I guess there are five posters coming with it okay this one is a concert with Catatonia also from Sweden back in their metal times and this one with an animated necrophobic man those were killer lineups first poster second poster oh is that picture that I showed he's wearing a battery shirt and on the back Gorgorov shirt yeah as you see it's very black metal visual which is you know when you listen to dissection you won't actually relate them to the Norwegian black metal scene it's more the Swedish black metal scene the early one the most melodic one actually that gives me an idea I can make a video talking about different uh, schools of black metal and here there's another poster and here we have a band this one with the most recent lineup so set titan thomas Nyon. here's another live picture um last but not least what is that this looks exactly like he was playing in brazil same vest and this is that that comes in the box itself rest in chaos oh and there's a flag Oh wow, that's oh I'm showing it. Oh. So here you have the brimstone and the black snake which represents the dragon from anti-cosmic Satanism. Oh here there's a metal pin. I'm gonna unbox this so come into a tape box. So yeah, a metal pin. This is their classic logo. I think it's a little bit too stuffed here. Oh, there's a dissection card. Yeah, I, I won't see that going to my jacket. I wish it was only the logo. Mem. What? Oh, anti-cosmic metal of death. That's how they describe their music genre after the rebirth of dissection so ah, i'm gonna man there are so many tapes i'm just gonna show a first sight of this so i'm gonna mention show like this is their first demo the grief prophecy uh, every tape comes with an insert i'm not gonna be showing everything 
and every tape okay this comes with a it's silk screen it's not pro stickers uh, all right this is type 1 tape so like ferric tapes is not chromium dioxide which is not the best quality tapes out there but darkness shall rise makes tapes out of a ferric uh, material that are top-notch quality absolutely no noise and absolutely incredible uh, dynamic range so don't be afraid of that here the other into infinite obscurity all right please note that not every tape comes with the protection notch broken so avoid accidents break it yourself and there's a promo of the somber lane their incredible debut um, yeah there are some nice videos that Dan Swano the producer of somber lane and uh, Storm of the Lights Bane put out when he talks about the different mixes and how he had a problem from the first to the second album because in the second album Yon was way more influenced by Norwegian black metal and he wanted the production to be different not as clear not as uh, polished as the original uh, the original production that was mostly related to Swedish black metal and he had a bad time he had to remix it uh, before going to the master I mean it's a quite funny story okay this one I'm gonna unbox oh wow this is such a beauty this is the somber lane their debut album here lyrics this is not my favorite one though but also a 10 out of 10 to me this is a uh, man I I'm suspect to talk about dissection and here you have what is that unreleased live recording 95 unreleased demo 94 satanist satanist satanized satanized that's the title of an album from a, an Austrian band called Abigor. Actually, their worst album. I mean, it was the last album from their original phase. I think they disbanded and came back after a while. Well, I never heard this demo. I mean, it's unreleased. I'm gonna be listening to all of it the entire day as a personal homage to Jan legacy and music uh, yeah as you can see here as I mentioned the protection notch is still attached I'm gonna be breaking it after I don't wanna record on top by accident something that unfortunately I already been through I mean every tape collector has a story like that so here there's a rough mix of Storm of the Lights Bane and here Storm of the Lights Bane the actual uh, art from Necrolord this is in a blue tape semi-transparent man this is I have no words to talk about that look it comes with the vinyl artwork as well on this CD, they don't. I mean, it was a different one. Uh, well, not to make so bulky uh, tape inserts, they are just putting like Jon's a uh, picture here. I mean, in the original vinyl, you find the pictures of every band member. I mean, I can show you that here. This is. Storm of the Lights Bane, vinyl, yeah. I mean, you see Yon's picture, but here you have the rest of the lineup. Uh, 
Okay, the EP where dead angels lie, where there is a Slayer cover, there is a Torment Tormentor cover for Elizabeth Battery, also in a dark blue transparent tape. Man, this video is gonna last forever. I'm sorry, there are so many things. Gods of Darkness live. Okay, Gods of Darkness, if I am not wrong, it is a tour they did with Dimo Borger, the Norwegian black metal band. And the VHS for this was what I would say introduced dissection uh, to the metal scene in my town. I mean, Dimo, Dimo Borger was uh, a little bit more well known. They were part of this... Uh, compilations released by Earache called Death is Just the Beginning and when Black Metal arrived it, it stormed over us and we were listening to all their Norwegian bands but when the VHS came we were watching Dissection and we were all mesmerized uh, it was a band it was the VHS that changed the game for us I'm almost speechless here Forget, forgive me if I'm saying a lot of wrong sentences. It's just that I can barely stand the emotion of holding this because this is a personal comeback to my inner self. <laughs> to It's like visiting the Alex of 15 years old once again. Here you have Live Legacy. This is a their first official live album. I had that on CD back in Brazil. And everything that Dissection released is sold out for quite a while and everything gets so expensive in terms of analogic. I'm talking about the vinyls and the tapes. The CDs, they are always being repressed. The vinyls is not this, like this. Uh, their first album, The Somber Lane, was repressed recently by Black Lodge Productions, but they they didn't uh, make it justice. They changed the original artwork, which is made by Necrolord, which is one of the most well-known and respected artists out there. And the first press by Black Lodge was so shitty that it had 30 minutes in side A plus 15 on side B and the sound quality of uh, side A was horrible so they needed to repress it in double vinyl the one I have but you can see that they only intend to make money it's not I mean this you can say it is made from fans uh, by fans for fans and can't say the same about Black Lord release. This uh, vinyl press is a bootleg by Moonhua Records. It is also something that goes and uses the same artwork and the same master as the original release. It's very good quality, but still, even a bootleg one costs right now a hundred euros. So it is crazy. Uh, good thing I was lucky and managed to buy it when they just re released it for around 20, 25 bucks because the original presses, the official presses are around 200 euro right now. So here are the hall recordings. If I'm not wrong, this is a leaked tape that Yon recorded in the jail when he knew that he was gonna be released. I think he was uh, convicted for eight years because he was uh, he helped into a homicide he was not the one who shot but he was uh, uh, I mean he was in the scene he was also involved uh, you can read on Wikipedia I, I'm not gonna be spending much time describing everything he did here um, black metal is a quite controversial thing I know that it might sound a little bit like, hey, what the fuck are you talking about homicide? But, you know, that's the history of black metal and you can't erase that and you you gotta learn how it happened so maybe it won't repeat itself, the story. 
So here's Live Rebirth. I guess this is maybe not the first concert they made after Yon came back from the prison, but uh, one of the first, in the first tour. I mean, this is the tour that I attended the concert. So there's a rehearsal 2005 when he started composing new songs. So when he went to Brazil, the tour there was the one from this EP, Mahakali, that had only two songs, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, Mahakali and Starless Ion. And he had released one other extra song that they also played there. Uh, I don't know the proper pronounce of it, but it's like Hefer Iset. Hefer I set. Yeah, it's it's written with an X like Shepherd. Okay, there's another live recording here. What is that? Winter noise. That's a double release. And after that it came the album that I personally don't like much. Hang Cows. And the lyrics I guess he wrote uh in companionship with if i'm not wrong frater naimidal uh this is the guy responsible for creating this uh, i would call it a creed or a religion i don't know call it the way you want to call it the anti-cosmic satanism or luciferianism and all of the lyrics here are basically describing the beliefs, describing what he understood by chaos and what he believed and what Satanism meant to him. So this is very deeply personal and religious and philosophical message that I know that most of the people who listen to it don't have a fully understanding of that. This after he killed himself, you know, I was, you know, listening to this album, reading the lyrics, checking again the videos from the concerts, and, I mean, it was clear to me that, it became clear to me why he did that, so everyone who wants to know what happened, just read the lyrics, read the interviews, uh, watch the videos online, there are so many sources nowadays. I mean, the entire Brazilian concert is available on YouTube. I can link it there. You can even see me there headbanging. And yeah. And here's the Rain Cow's instrumental re uh, rehearsal. Last but not least, Midsummer Massacre rehearsal. Oh, it's another rehearsal. I thought it was a live. Oh, here there's a lot of old songs being played so you have unhallowed where dead angels lie night's blood soul reaper the somber lane yeah here you've got a lot of old songs i'm not even gonna store this now because i'm gonna be listening to it i'm so excited for that and that's it more than 30 minutes here uh sorry for taking that long but I have such a personal and deep connection to Dissection as I imagine most of Dissection fans also have. And I think this is the perfect homage and it's such a coincidence that this box arrived here exactly on this day. Um, <laughs> I would consider that a joke coming straight from chaos. Anyways, if you like this content, I suggest you to subscribe. The other videos I do here are more or less the same, not exactly talking about dissection, but mostly about my record collection. Mostly vinyl. I don't have so many tapes. I have quite a few, but not as many as vinyls. And I'm not posting here that frequently, but, you know, one can change that. It's, it's my nature. Thank you very much for staying here till the very end and I see you next time. Bye.